Money, the source for market opinions, brought to you by AmericanManganeseInc.com. Here is Sterling Fox. Our first guest on This Week in Money is a return appearance by Gerald Salente, the founder and director of the Trends Research Institute and publisher of the Trends Journal. Gerald Salente, welcome back. Well, Sterling Fox, thanks for having me. <laughs> it's great to talk to you again. And you're such a guy with an, an eye on the world. I cannot begin this conversation any other way but to ask you about your reaction to the demise of Osama bin Laden. Well, first of all, let me say that I'm a political atheist. So what I have to say isn't any taking any poke at a political party. I, I've heard it all before. Read my lips, no new taxes. I didn't... Uh, have sex with that woman, Monica Lewinsky. I smoked, but I didn't inhale. Saddam Hussein has weapons of mass destruction. I am no crook. Uh, I just don't believe anything that's being told. And, and the reason I'm saying that is because the story has changed so often. Right. And, and beginning with, hey, we fitted this guy with some cement shoes, and now he's swimming with the fishes. I mean, and oh, but, but that is, of course, that's an Islamic tradition, we're told. And, of course, it's a humiliation in you, uh, Islamic tradition. And then there was that firefight. And then there wasn't a firefight. And then he used his wife as a human shield, that dirty SOB, or Osama. Well, he didn't use his wife as a human shield. And it, they call it a fog of war. There was no war. And, and the first casualty of war, if there was, is a lie. So I don't know if this guy's been dead before, dead now, but here's the difference. Dead or alive, it makes no difference. Osama bin has been dead out of the news for how long now? Five years, six years? Easily. All of those uprisings, Sterling, in the Middle East, in North Africa, they're the antithesis of Osama bin Laden. These were secular movements. They hate Osama bin Laden. Good point. This guy's been a has-been. Yep. So then what about this business? And, and you're wise to be skeptical, I think, Gerald. It's an attitude held by many of us here in North America. But then, of course, you go beyond skepticism into speculation. And, uh, I mean, the Internet is just absolutely crammed full of speculation in the wake of the announcement of bin Laden's takedown by the U.S. Navy. A lot of people say, look, the guy's been dead for eight, nine, ten years. This is just a hoax. I mean, do, do you care about that, first of all? And do you believe any? of it secondly well first of all he's been dead metaphorically or physically it doesn't count okay you know, is, is there a santa claus you know it doesn't make any difference there's not one bit of difference about osama bin laden being dead other than of course let's play back the tape because tracking trends is an understanding of where we are how we got here and where we're going let's go four days before the big bin laden news the real public enemy number one was Osama Ben Bernanke at the first ever Federal Reserve press conference. I watched their 98 it. years of existence. Exactly, yeah. And do you remember what happened? Before he got off the stage, gold prices shot up $20 an ounce. Silver prices went up $2 an ounce. The dollar hit a three-year low against a trade-weighted basket of currencies. Why? Because Ben Bernanke, Osama Bernanke, said... We're going to keep interest rates really low. Yep. They call it loose money policy. I call it cheap money policy. I call it flooding the marketplace with digital dollars not worth the paper it's not printed on. That's the real news. What happened? Hey, by Monday morning, commodity prices started to crash. The dollar gained against all of the currencies. Osama bin Laden's dead. They milked this for every penny that they could make out of it. And it worked. It got the people's minds off the attention of what was going on. Now, that's not a conspiracy theory. That's a fact, because something else was going on. They were dropping humanitarian bombs on Colonel Gaddafi's son's home. They always call it a compound. Yes. You bad guys never live in houses. They only live in compounds. Right, right. You see Osama bin Laden's compound? Pretty it swanky, like a, huh? It, yeah, it looked like a, a place, a shabby joint where uh, a homeless guy was living, and he picked up a TV out of a dumpster. Yeah. That's his command and control center. Anyway, they killed Gaddafi's son and his three children. The tide was turning against NATO, the U.S., and now this dollar crisis is going on. All that's out of the news. 
Again, we're now in the realm of Internet speculation, but some are referring to the whole operation as a false flag. Gerald, what is a false flag and does it apply here? It may. Yeah, false flag is when they do something that doesn't happen, but get everybody all. It's a contrived um, event like Saddam Hussein has weapons of mass destruction uh-huh. and ties to Al Qaeda. Okay. Like the Gulf of Tonkin incident that never happened. It never happened. The United States made it look like it happened. They took the country to war. And by the way, that was the beginning of the end of the United States was the Vietnam War. And I'm, I'm of that age. You know, I was born in 46. I was there for the whole shot. Right. And, uh, and, and we waste, and that's what the United States continues to do. And people need to grow up about this. The business of America is war. The business of China is business. The business of America, according to Calvin Coolidge, used to be business and the temple was the manufacturing the factory mm-hmm. now the temples have been moved to china and the business of china is business you can see the results to the point where china is actually having to raise interest rates and other practices in order to put the brakes on the growth that can't be sustained at nine plus percent levels exactly and look at the inflation that's running around now we'll look at producer price index and the wholesale price index that just came out. Bernanke says it's transitory. Now, one of the reasons, the reasons why commodities are going up is supply and demand, obviously. Yeah. But the other one is commodities are dollar based. The cheaper the dollar gets, the more it costs to buy them. Gerald Salente is on the line here on This Week in Money, joining us from Kingston, New York. And, uh, Gerald, I want to turn your uh, attention, your curiosity, and perhaps your cynicism to something that's going on both in Canada and the United States right now, but particularly in your country, sir. And that's this spate of incredibly bad weather that's uh, ripping up the United States Midwest and to a lesser extent places in Canada like Saskatchewan, Manitoba, and Quebec. But in the United States, states there is just an unbelievable amount of horrible weather going on to the point where and now i cross that line into the weird world of speculation but where some are saying that this is deliberate somehow the united states government is responsible for manipulating weather and causing enough bad weather to occur in one specific geographic area to perhaps even create something as horrible as an earthquake. I know I should be wearing my tin hat when I ask you questions like this, Gerald, but I'm just, I read the internet like you do, and I'm wondering what you make of this speculation. Well, they're they're the two things that people talk a lot about, of course, a harp. Yes. H-A-A-R-P. The The chemtrails. Sorry, harp and chemtrails. Those are the two big ones. Right. Do they both exist? Yes. Is that what's causing them? I'll tell you my, I don't know, but here's what I believe. First of all, I do think that more things are happening, but not because of a master plan, but because of master stupidity. I'm of the belief that if you poison the water, you're going to die from it. That if you poison the air and put radiation into it, you're going to die from it. If you keep extracting the lubrication out of the earth, just my personal opinion, I have no scientific fact behind it, it's going to just start disturbing it. If you start throwing loads of poisons into the atmosphere, climate conditions are going to change. Is it global warming? Is it climate change? I don't know. But all I know, if you sit down and eat a lot of McDonald's and you drink a lot of Diet Coke, you're going to look like you drank a lot of Diet Coke and and, and ate McDonald's. <laughs> so that's what a way I look at it, that they're, that the actions of mankind, the earth is, is, is convulsing the stupidity of man. Gerald, as the publisher of the Trends Journal and founder and director of the Trends Research Institute, it's your job and your life's work to pay attention to the sorts of details that frequently escape the rest of us. And I'm wondering, as you look ahead to the rest of 2011, as we're close to summertime now and maybe even looking forward to cashing in on a vacation day or two, how you see the the trends, especially here in the economy of North America, shaping up not only for the balance of this year, but beyond. Decline. 
continuing decline. And, and again, it's the loose money policy, and all things are connected. What's also going on in Europe as well. There's no salvaging the European Monetary Union as countries start falling out of it, like Greece, Ireland, Portugal, Spain is next. Uh, and you just can't keep printing this money to keep the Ponzi scheme going, because that's all it is. It's one big Ponzi scheme, as Bernie Madoff, the king of Ponzi, said on February 27th. That it, it was an article in, the, in New York Magazine. The game is rigged, and, and it's one big Ponzi scheme. Mm -hmm. So the Ponzi scheme has to end at some point, and we're going to see that. But Sterling, here's really what we're seeing, and this is the pieces that we're putting together. What's going on in North Africa and the Middle East and the, and the rioting in Europe, Greece is every other week. People are taking to the streets everywhere. It's the beginning of the first great war of the 21st century, and people aren't putting the pieces together. And when they look back in history, they're going to say again, how couldn't they see it coming? Here, just do the, just do the math. 1929, Great Depression, currency wars, trade wars, World War II. Right. The Panic of 08, the Great Recession, the greatest recession. The only reason it hasn't gone into depression yet is because they keep pump pumping in all this dough to, to artificially inflate it. Currency wars, trade wars next. The great first great war of the new millennium, the 21st century, is underway. And people don't recognize it. And that's why, by the way, I, we're, we're still forecasting, as we have since the very beginning, gold 2000. Since not, 2001, we made that forecast, and we're sticking by it. Gerald, I've got to go back to one thing. You, you know, this is the second time you brought this up on This Week in Money. The whole notion that this is the beginning of the first great war of the new millennium, the 21st century. When we hear that expression, we think of the blue army versus the red army and or the gray army and the green army. But this is not, I gather, going to be anything that in any way resembles the kind of war scenario that we would imagine when we hear the word, the next great war. Exactly. It's going to be wars of weapons of mass destruction. It's going to be wars of biological warfare. It's going to be a war of suitcase-sized nukes. Here, Sterling, I'll ask you this. Suppose you didn't attack anybody else, and you were having some problems up there in Canada, and the natives were restless. And all of a sudden, Libya decides they don't like your government, but they like the other side, and they start bombing your country. And you're the leader of that country, and they wipe out your kids and his family. You think you want to seek revenge? If you were a Pakistani and all of a sudden predator drones come flying into your wedding party or into your town, and you're killing people, you think you want to seek revenge? With all of this talk that we're talking about with Osama bin Laden, yeah. I ask one question, and I ask this question all the time. How come no one ever talks about why? Why? Why did it happen? Oh, they hate our freedom and liberty. Oh, yeah, sure. They could care less. You're not going to Disneyland or shopping at, uh, at Walmart. It's not about our freedom and liberty. It's called foreign policy. And that's what's going on here. So people are talking all this talk, but they're not looking at the cause. So this great war of the 21st century, by the way, should also be duly noted. We said when the bailout bubble bursts, the next thing they'll do is take you to war. So that's what's going on. The Ponzi scheme is almost over. The bailout bubble is ready to burst. And after that, and our lives are going to be hell because they're going to clamp down on our freedoms more and more and more. Gerald, I have to leave it there. Unfortunately, I'm fresh out of time, and I'm glad I've taken the time and made the room for you on This Week in Money again. It is always a pleasure to have you on our program. And let me just take another quick second and recommend the Trends Research Institute and Trends Journal as an interesting read every time you get a chance. Thank you, Sterling. Gerald Salente in Kingston, New York. Quick break.